قال عز وجل في محكم التنزيل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال عيسى بن مريم يا بني إسرائيل إني رسول الله إليكم مصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة ومبشرا برسول يأتي من بعدي اسمه أحمد رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب Today I would like to demonstrate two things and uh, the first is the love of the Prophet وسلم, what it has to do with the coming of the Dajjal and the second <coughs> we will be looking at a da'if hadith and so I want you to all get a feeling of what it means when we say something is da'if when we say something is weak in hadith what does it mean so I'm going to show you a hadith that is weak and show you its general chain of narrations meaning I will show you all the different places where the same similar words are and the same idea is coming from here from here from here and I will let you all decide if this is in your mind something authentic or if it is something unauthentic so let us start by the Quran in Surah Al-Saf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says okay بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال عيسى بن مريم and remember when عيسى بن مريم said يا بني إسرائيل O children of Israel إني رسول الله إليكم I am a messenger of Allah to you confirmed مصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة I'm confirmed with that Torah that is between your hands. وَمُبَشِّرًا And I'm here to give you the good news. بِرَسُولِي of a Rasul يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِي Who will come after me? اسمُهُ His name is Ahmed. Okay. Why Ahmed is mentioned instead of Muhammad is being mentioned? This is a subject one day I will talk about, but not today. But it's a very interesting subject. فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ When the clear, when Isa alayhi salatu wasalam showed them the clear signs that he is doing the miracles from Allah. قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ They said this is just magic. This is plain magic. He's no prophet of Allah. And this was the habit that had become of Bani Israel to prove that the prophets of Allah were not prophets of Allah by killing them. Or trying to kill them. Now, what do we see in this ayah? What we see in this ayah is that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, his mission is in between two, it's the ending of Bani Israel and the beginning of a new ummah. He's here to tell you, I am a prophet confirmed in your own books. Number one. Number two, to give you the good news of coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is your last chance. I am your last prophet, O Bani Israel. And this is your last chance to accept me and then also now wait for the last prophet who will come after me. What does this show? This shows the love of Isa alayhi salatu was salam for Prophet Muhammad, for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mubashiran, I will give you the good news. Bi rasooli ya'ti, of that messenger who is coming, the good news of his coming. The mubashiran bi rasooli ya'ti min ba'di, and he will not come until I leave. Anybody remember these words of the Bible? That he will not come till I leave. This is what Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, it's there still in three of the four of the Gospels where Jesus said, he will not come, I have to go for him to come. It is expedient for you that I leave, he said. I'm going to show you one of those uh, places, okay? This is still there in the John chapter 16. And I will just read this part where Isa alayhi salatu wasalam says, I have much to, much more to say to you. 
more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak of his own. He will only speak of what he hears. He will tell you what is yet to come. He will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, meaning Jesus, because it is from me that he will. So then Jesus says, Jesus went to say, in a little while you will see me no more. And then after a while you will see me. So this is the one of the parts of the Bible where Jesus says that Muhammad will tell you the truth about me. There are other parts of the Bible, but of course some of this is construed. So let's go back to the Quran. So Isa والسلام, comes to tell the truth of Prophet Muhammad. And he says, I have to leave for Muhammad to come. This should tell somebody how much he appreciated and how fond and how much he loved the Prophet ﷺ. And his mission was to tell the people of the coming of Nabi Muhammad ﷺ because now from Musa to Isa, Bani Israel has come to an end. Now a new Ummah needs to take place. That is a later discussion. I'm not discussing the topic of Isa والسلام, talking about a new Ummah coming. But you can read that between the lines. He's talking about, I am confirmed in your Bible. And there's a new prophet coming. He is the spirit of truth. He is Ahmad. Ismuhu Ahmad. His name is Ahmad. Okay? And so, the word Ahmad, I'll just mention that, refers to the, the physical being of Muhammad is, or the physical being of the prophet Muhammad bin Abdullah, is Muhammad, but his internal being, his spiritual being, his, you could say his ruh, his spirit, is Ahmed. And this is a longer discussion, which I will have in another day. But over here, I was only pointing to what? Uh, that Isa والسلام, he talked about the coming of this prophet often. And he talked about he needs to leave for this prophet to come. And he talked about uh, the greatness of the Prophet ﷺ and how he will bring justice to the world and he will bring judgment to the world and he will do away with everything and he will glorify Isa ﷺ and he will tell the truth and he will not speak on his behalf, so on and so forth. Okay, So meaning Isa ﷺ loved the Prophet ﷺ very much and was very fond of him. So Isa والسلام, had a yearning and a love and uh, positive feelings, good tidings and a bond with Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he had that he didn't have with any other Prophet Now why is this important? And why is this practical? Because Isa والسلام, is the opposite of the Dajjal the Antichrist. And so one loves Muhammad, therefore the other will hate Muhammad What is the reason for that? The reason for that can be seen in this very authentic hadith of the Prophet in which the Prophet said as I will show you here inshallah. Okay. The Prophet said la takumu sa'a the hour will not come hatta yumbatha dajjalun kadhabun qareebun min thalathina kulluhum yazma' ya'zum annahu rasulullah the hour will not come until there are approximately 30 liars who will all think that they are the messenger of allah okay so in order for a false prophet so bismillah before we continue further let me just mention this um number one uh, definitely subscribe inshallah and in the comment section i will have pinned a comment about joining my telegram group number one inshallah number two there will be another uh, link to my paypal uh, account 
where if anybody wants to donate anything so that we can further our projects. I mean, my projects uh, take a very long time to complete because of it's, you know, uh, without funding, everything is slow. While the non-Muslims are giving billions and billions of dollars, um, you know, for those of you whose hearts are open, you can, uh, you know, participate. And inshallah, may Allah increase for all of us. And uh, can you can participate and earn the rewards on the Day of Judgment, inshallah ta'ala, uh, by helping me uh, in this cause. And so let's inshallah now continue, inshallah. So definitely subscribe. Uh, join the telegram group and if you feel like donating but read the comment section uh, the note I have over there inshallah ta'ala in order for his false prophet to have authority he has to shun the true prophet who is Muhammad in order to say I am the messenger of Allah you have to downplay the real prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you could see this in the history of Elijah Muhammad, the false prophet. You could see this in the Ghulam Mirza Qadiani. You can see this in the Bahullah, uh, the, Bahu, the, the Bahai faith, right? Downplaying Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? In order to take precedence yourself. So how will we protect our children and how will we protect ourselves from a false prophet? You can only really truly protect yourself if it is beyond the rational. If you have love for the prophet, if you have tenderness, a soft place, a very soft place in your heart for Nabi Muhammad only with that tenderness and that softness, and that love, and that, uh, you can say, reminiscing over how he was, and who he was, and what he did, and what he accomplished, and feeling appreciative to the Prophet ﷺ. Only with that will one be able to what? To be able to identify the Dajjal as the Dajjal. Because at the rational level, he may prove to you he is a messenger. At the rational level, he may convince you with arguments and with fantastic uh, works. And he may give you food. And he may give you a lot of things you need. Or he may offer you a lot of things you need. But what will keep you from saying, okay, fine, I really need food right now. Let me give in. I don't really believe it in my heart. But when you give in, and you give in, and you give in, the false prophet begins to look like a true prophet. Because the one, the hand that will be feeding you, the hand that will be saying, here's Jannah, right? The hand that will be saying, here's your Jannah. How will you stay away from that Jannah? And the only way will be that if you have true love and tenderness for Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So it is extremely important to build a love connection with Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Only when you feel like that you're devoted to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will you be able to refuse the jal and what he has to offer. Only if you feel like that he's my habib, that I love him, and that Allah loves him, and if you have that connection with the Prophet ﷺ to really appreciate Nabi Muhammad ﷺ for the guidance he's given you, that unless that happens, then you even if you are put in a position, or your children are put in a position, or the next generation's put in a position where he's cornered you and he's offering you a carrot and you're desperate, then he is embarking you on a place where if you embark on it, you're going to leave Islam and you're going to start believing in a false prophet. And so deep, deep reverence and love and devotion for Prophet Muhammad is necessary to be able to avoid the Dajjal. And so you will not sell this life for the next life. And you will, and one of the ways that will happen 
is if you love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you read Sutul Kahf, what's the main theme of Sutul Kahf? The world, this world is temporary; it'll pass. All that will last is your good deeds. This life is the biggest deception that the Jad will use to prove to you that he's a prophet. He's going to try to give you glory in this world. That is another subject. Now let's continue, inshallah. So unless you have a strong fidelity to the Prophet, a strong emotional attachment, how will that happen unless you're learning about Nabi Muhammad wasallam? Unless you know about his mercy. What is the whole history of the last two, three hundred colonial and orientalist history has been? Hey, who have they attacked? They've attacked specifically who? Nabi Muhammad wasallam. They've attacked his personality specifically. Why? Attacking the Prophet because... Until you don't break down the love of the Prophet and the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam, the Jal will not be ready to come. He won't be able to do what he wants to do if people still love Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And so he has to prove he's a he has to prove he's a prophet. In order to prove he is a prophet, he has to downplay Prophet Muhammad. And history has been playing that card for a long time now. And this is why one of the reasons that, you know, you have these all only Qur'an fraudsters. Okay, only Qur'an fraudsters. They shouldn't even be called Qur'aniyun. They don't, they're not Ahlul Qur'an. They're not the people of Qur'an. The Qur'an, the people of Qur'an are those who ha have the man of Qur'an, the Sahibul Qur'an, the whose heart was Qur'an. That's the original Qur'an. That's the real Qur'an. So anyway... So, the man who brought Qur'an and taught Qur'an and lived Qur'an and established the laws of Qur'an and demonstrated a society based upon Qur'an, he was all Qur'an. And so, this man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who, who established Qur'an for all to see, who lived Qur'an, who was the walking Qur'an, if you don't love him, if you don't feel affection for him, you have to look deep into your heart. Do you have any resentment to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Because I'm going to show you another aspect of the love of Isa alayhi salatu wasallam for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But I'm going to take that at a different level today. I'm going to also take this opportunity to show you what weak hadith means. There's a hadith that I'm going to show you that shows that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam loved the Prophet so much that what? That he will want to be buried by the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. He will want, he will yearn for the Prophet. He left so the Prophet can come. And when he leaves, he will be buried by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Can you imagine the love he has for the Prophet? So, <clears throat> we're going to look at a weak hadith, and then you will decide if this is what this weak hadith means to you. What does it mean to you? Number one, at the level of the logic of the universal, right? The Quran tells us he loves him. Okay, so what is the natural result of that fondness, right? Uh, of that desire, of being meaning when you love someone you're mad about them right so let us become people who are mad about prophet muhammad now let's look at this hadith that i'm going to show you now that's the weak hadith so now we're going to look at the hadith that says isa wasalam, is going to be buried by prophet muhammad wasalam, in his hujra in his room okay so, the first one, هَكَذَا مَا رُوِيَ أَتْتِرْمَزِي عَنْ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ إِبْنْ سَلَامِ أَنَّهُ مَكْتُوبٌ فِي التَّوْرَةِ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ سَلَامِ رضي الله عنه He says, أَنَّهُ مَكْتُوبٌ فِي التَّوْرَةِ It is written in Torah, أَنَّ عِيسَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ يُدْفِنْ مَعَ نَبِي مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم So, it says that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will be buried by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And it says, وَهُوَ الْدَعِيثِ 
So this is the first the first hadith is is narrated by who? Imam Tirmizi. Okay, that it is written in Torah that he'll be buried by the Prophet The one thing I will clear, I wish I had time to show you pictures, but there is a fourth space. So you know that uh, the grave of the Prophet has so far how many people in it? Um, has three people in the Prophet Abu Bakr, Umar radiallahu anhu majma'in wa sallallahu alayhi wa right? And there is space in it for a fourth person. Okay, so just keep this in mind as we go through these uh, hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu There's another narration by Nu'aym bin Hamad, okay, in which, uh, and this is from Dahiq, okay, uh, نَزَرْتُ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ سَفَى مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ I saw in the Torah the qualities of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَعِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ عَلَيْهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ يُدْفَنْ مَعَهُ And Isa عَلَيْهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ will be buried with him. وَقَالَ أَبُو مُودُودْ قَدْ يَبْقَى مِنَ الْبَيْتِ مَوَادِعِ الْقَبْرِ And it says, he says, in his hujra, there is the space for his qabr. Okay. In fact, it's very clear. It's almost there's a there's a, a space already dug out for a grave in that hujra. By the way, قال الترمذي هذا حديث حسن غريب. Okay, and now let's look at the next روات ابتبراني في معجم الكبير. Okay, he says Abdullah bin Nafir. Okay. يُدْفَنْ إِسَى عَلَيْهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ مَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَالصَّاحِبَيْهِ فَيَكُونُ قَبْرُ الرَّابِعِ Okay, so this is now, this is Daif Hadith now, that uh, Sheikh Albani and others and others have called Daif Hadith. So I'm just giving you the narrations. So this is in Imam, Tar- Tar- uh, Imam Tabarani's Mu'jam Al-Kabir. He says what? That uh, the Prophet uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will be buried with the, he will be the fourth grave in the hujra of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Okay? And then, uh, <coughs> go on to Bukhari, fi tarikh al-kabir. Okay? Uh, in tarikh al-kabir, it says, Yudfin uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Isa ibn Maryam ma Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi baytihi that Isa alayhi salatu wa sallam will be buried with the Prophet in his house. Qala Bukhari and Imam Bukhari said hadha la yusha indi he said this is not authentic according to me. So keep the bigger picture in mind. Okay. Then uh, there is another narration that in which uh Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, uh, An Aisha ta qalat, qalat, qultu, ya Rasulullah, O oh Rasulullah, inni ara, <coughs> I wish and I see that an Aish min ba'dak, ta'dhun li an adfan li jambik. Can I have permission to be buried by your side? فقال إني إن أن لي بذلك الموضع ما فيه إلا موضع القبر وقبر أبو بكر وعمر وقبر إيسا عليه الصلاة والسلام. He said, how can this happen when there is the grave of Abu Bakr here and Umar is here and Isa عليه الصلاة والسلام is here. So basically, that Aisha would have to be buried outside the hujra of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Okay, then uh, let's look at another narration. In this narration from Mishkat, it says, "Fayudfin ma'ya fi qabri." Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will be buried with me in my grave. Fakama ana wa Isa Isa ibn Maryam fi qabri wahid, bini Abu Bakr wa Umar, and me and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will be raised. On the day of judgment, from the same place. So you have the narration of Aisha saying, "Can I be buried by the grave?" You have the uh, narration of the Rabbi Abdullah bin Salam radiAllahu an saying, "I saw this description of Prophet Muhammad and Isa alayhi salatu being buried by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." 
Okay, and you have other narrations. So basically, three, four narrations. They're weak. Some have considered them more than weak, others less than weak, but they're weak, generally considered weak. Now, when the same information is coming from four different sources, when the same information is coming from the four different sources, in the context of the bigger picture, the universal, I ask you to tell me, do you think this hadith is authentic? Is this narration authentic? Not in the sense of da'if or sahih in the criteria of the ulama, because their criteria was very strict. Their criteria was like if they asked somebody on, okay, on the fifth page of Surah Al-Baqarah, on the third line, what is the third word? Right? So that, this hadith, I mean, the, the, the memory of those people that are considered sahih, it's like if you ask somebody, you know, on the, on the third page of Surah Al-Imran, in the sixth line, the seventh word, what is it? And the person would be able to immediately tell you, boom, that's the word, right? So, these narrations are not, near, near, you could say they're not that, coming from that type of authenticity, okay? But, they are coming from different turuks. Okay, at least from three to four or five different turks, from three, four different five places, from different chains, alluding to the same point. So individually they may be weak, and individually they may have weakness. But put together, are they still weak or not? So this is the question I'm asking you. And so uh, I have now, uh, and also, uh, just as a side point, we've also looked at the point that the grave of the Prophet has the space for, and in fact already has a space dug out uh, for Isa a.s. according to some of the narrations. But there's definitely space in there for a fourth grave. And <clears throat> so now you tell me uh, what you think if Isa a.s. will be buried by the Prophet or not. But let me go back to the main point. And that is your fidelity and your attachment and your love for the Prophet ﷺ. How necessary it is in order not to be betrayed by a false prophet. You have to make your love for the Prophet more apparent and more, uh, more stronger. And so the stronger your love for the Prophet, the stronger your love for his sunnah, the stronger your love for your desire to see him, and meet him and be with him and to make him smile and make him to be happy with you the stronger chances are that you and your family members and your children if this is imparted to them that they will be able to pass this test in desperate times but if you're one of those Muslims that wants to just look at Quran and wants to separate the Quran from the Prophet and if you're one of those Muslims that wants, that in your heart, because of all the 200, 300 years of propaganda against the Prophet that has been happening over and over again, right, that your heart is somehow affected by that, then you want to take extra time to take a check at that. And that you find yourself in a place where you love the Prophet So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa